Hi everyone, welcome to my top 10 cards of Opus 11. Let's dive in. So the first card is Kutraspal 11-004C, and his effect is dull, damage dealt to forge, your opponent controls cannot be reduced this turn. This was a game changer, or is a game changer for fire, simply for the fact that it completely gets rid of its shortcomings like Minwoo and Aerith, and anything that is able to just reduce something's damage to zero that is below its actual power. Now this is a big card also because it represents a big change in the way Final Fantasy worded a lot of his cards. For example, there was the Leviathan which makes uh, your forwards take no damage from summons, which has now been errated into damage is reduced to zero. Uh, obviously Kuchaspal would the actually effect that was before it wouldn't have. So Kuchaspal is a very very good card because fire lives and breathes by chip damage and you've got more cards now like uh, Baraska's Final Aeon that can just deal 10k but most of its cards are small amounts of chip damage so Kuchas will really saves the day there. Umaru, I'm gonna try and not do too many legends in this set but um, Umaru I have used a fair amount and absolutely love as a card so I felt it's worth putting him in there just because of his effect not because of his um, Status, but um, yeah, so if you control a card named Mog, the cost for playing Umaro onto the field is reduced by two. When Umaro enters the field, choose one forward your opponent controls, put it at the bottom of your owner's deck. At the end of each of your turns, choose one forward your opponent controls, freeze it. So that middle ability, uh, just being able to take any forward your opponent has and just slip it under their deck, that's in some ways almost worse than removal because it's still there and they know that it's still there and they're still able to get to it but they're gonna to have to invest more into that forward which they've already paid for onto the field now obviously you've paid potentially five for Umaru but more likely you'll have paid seven for Umaru but just slipping it back under there there's no restrictions it gets past things like uh, Fail Thanos as well so him just coming in to be like nope go away is awesome but then it's added effect of at the end of each of your turns choose one forward your opponent controls freeze it is mean because that means that your opponent won't ever want to attack unless they've got some form of reactivation uh, or brave um, but it's just such an offensive card and I think it's a strange ability as well like as if it's the first of its kind to have take a forward put it under their deck I, I've, it's, it's a form of deck manipulation that's something that there isn't a huge amount of at the moment in the game and I really like it okay Imo 11-109R one water, one colorless, dull, and put Imo into the break zone. Choose one auto ability or action ability that has only one target. You may choose another target instead. The new target must be valid. So this applies mostly to things like Noctis, the legendary Noctis. Um, when he take, when your opponent takes their sixth point of damage, choose up to one forward, break it. So you could actually choose Noctis. So if your opponent takes six point of damage, they're like, okay, I'm gonna break your whatever. You're like, no, actually Noctis is gonna choose himself for that ability, um, which is hilarious in and of itself. Uh, but it applies to forwards that, or uh, auto abilities that state, um, choose a forward. So it just has to choose a forward. It can't say choose a forward opponent controls or anything like that. It just has to be choose a forward. Kadage, so, this card saved me in my pre-release, if you can call it pre-release because of COVID-19, but um, yeah, so EX first, when Kadaj enters the field, you may search for one job remnant other than card name Kadaj and add it to your hand. When Kadaj or a job name remnant enters your field, choose one character opponent controls, freeze it. So I think this card is awesome because it's like a weaker Opus 1 Sellers. So you can just, your opponent could turn one player back up, you turn one, play Kadaj, freeze your first, freeze your, eh, freeze your opponent's back up. But I think he's better because one, he's an EX, and two, he searches you another remnant. Now, those remnants all play into each other, like Yazoo comes in, he will dull something, then Kadaj will be like, oh, you played a remnant, can you free something as well? So that little combo just immediately dulls and freezes something. And you can just keep on doing it and it's so strong and it just works in and of itself like if you've just got I don't know five cards short in an ice deck and let's face it we're never short in decks when you're putting cards in but um, <laughs> if you just want like a nice little secure engine that helps itself I think Kadaj, Yazoo and Loz work awesomely together and I think they 
really add to ice in this opus. Braska's final Aeon. So when Braska's final, eh, final Aeon attacks or is chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities, choose up to one forge your opponent controls, deal it 10,000 damage. This damage cannot be reduced. Discard, eh, discard Braska's final Aeon, choose one forward, deal it 10,000 damage. You can only use this ability if you control two or more job summoner forwards and if Braska's final Aeon is in your hand. So I don't care about that discard ability. It's nice to have, but ultimately if you are in fire, I mean, you could throw Braska's final Aeon as a, a little spice so you could be running like some sort of weird summoner's deck and then all of a sudden you're like ha i'm just gonna discard Bruce's final aeon you could be on like earth water or just mono water and just have him there ready to deal 10k to something but his ability to be able to just deal 10k on attack or when he's chosen is scary now there are some cards that used to be able to defend against this like um Aerith, but even then she would only, you know, she'd take 2,000 less, so that would still be enough to kill her outright, but she would reduce damage, but this cannot be reduced, and any forward that says cannot take damage now has been, as I said earlier with Kuchaspel, has now been stipulated to reduces it to zero. So now it cannot be reduced, and Brass's final land will just probably kill it, which means that Fire is doing pretty well this set. Exodus FFTA. Now this is a kind of screw you card to your opponent. Like your opponent's losing, let's just make sure they're definitely gonna lose. EX Burst. Choose one forward you control until the end of the turn. It gains 3,000 power. Brave. And this forward cannot become dull by your opponent's summons or abilities. And this forward cannot be returned to its owner's hand by your opponent's summons or abilities. If your opponent has received five points of damage or more, all the forwards you control gain all previous effects instead. So, if, you're, if you just took your opponent to five points of damage, so this could be the thing, like you've got a couple of forwards ready to attack, you attack with the first one, it goes through, and it deals them their fifth point of damage. You can then cast this card to just give all your other forwards, and this is assuming that you've got more than two forwards, it really be worth it, but it's just so scarily good. Uh, it's just, even if your opponent's got a like has met you in force and you've got three forwards they've got three forwards but they're five points of damage you just play exodus they've all got three thousand power and brave that alone is good for one cp but this card is an ex and makes it so they can't become dull by your opponent's summons or abilities and can't be returned aside from not being able to be broken your opponent's gonna have a hard time getting rid of the cards so exodus is just decent black mage uh, I wasn't sure whether or not to put this card into it or not, but I, uh, having looked at it, and this is my top 10, so they aren't necessarily m like the best meta cards, but I think Black Mage is a funny little card that's worth mentioning. Uh, so it's just pay X, dull, put Black Mage into the break zone, cast one summon of cost X or less from your hand without paying the cost, then return that summon to your hand after use instead of putting it into the break zone. To be able to just cast a summon, then return it to your hand, and then play it again is quite powerful. Now, obviously the more expensive the summon, the less likely it is to get played twice. However, if it's something like, I don't know, let's go with Raiden, shall we? Let's pay nine and get rid of Black Mage. Then let's play Ajido Marajido to then play Raiden again. You know, this card stacks up so well with Ajido Marajido, but you know, even then you will have paid what, 14 and broken a backup? So that's a little silly, and you will have removed two things, broken two things. But the point still stands that you are able to play any two summons you want with Black Mage and then Ajido Marajido. And Black Mage will also make the space for Ajido Marajido. But it doesn't rely just on that card. I'm going to stop saying Ajido Marajido because it's driving me insane. <laughs> but to be able to play just even something like the new Valfor, which isn't Valfor, it's Pandemonium. Um, so you've got a couple of black mages down, and you black mage pandemonium, play again, uh, reactivate your backup, play it again with another black mage, and then play it a third time <laughs> using that card to keep dulling. Uh, basically, black mage is sacrificing itself to play or to return this summon back to your hand, and there are some silly combos you can do with that, especially if you've got quite a few summons in hand. Anima. So this card I really enjoy in Lightning, and Lightning didn't get... I, I didn't get as many good cards in comparison to the other elements I feel in this set, but Anima I think is definitely one of them. So when a forward opponent controls put from the field into the break zone, choose one forward opponent controls, dull it. So that is effectively two forms of removal on one. Your opponent, you break something, 
you can then dull something else and it's weird how lightning works this way because lightning tries so hard to target active things but then you've got cards like anima and amon which just dull things out of the way as well so you're kind of limiting your ability to be able to hit something but regardless of the fact you still get to move something out of the way but i also love its pay zero ability choose one for opponent controls to deal at 2000 damage you can only use this ability once per turn to just be able to tack on 2000 damage to something like lightning i often find kind of half struggles to just finish that thing off when dealing damage to something so having that 2000 damage just be able to go ping that thing's dead also ties in nicely to its first ability to then dull something else mirror so this is a bit of a game changer card and i like it simply for the fact that it's the first card that allows you to make backups a forward now i did do in a common what episode it is now uh my around about episode five i think it was of um my card combo show I went through all the, or a few different combos that Mira can do, but I think there's the ability to be able to choose one category FFCC character other than a forward you control, activate it until the end of the turn also becomes a forward with 8,000 power. First of all, it's activating that character, so if it's a backup, you can if it's got a dull ability, you can reuse it. But it's also when that forward gets put into the break, or when a category FFCC character other than Mirror you control is put from the field into the break zone, you may search for one category FFCC character of the same card type and add it to your hand. So it's also the fact that you can sacrifice a backup if you so need. You're in water, so you could fa you could make your backup a forward, you could then sack it with fam for it, and then search for another backup if you wanted, or forward, because at the end of the day, that backup was also a forward. So you've got two things you can now search for and just replace it and i think that's crazy good all right i've got a few honorable mentions before we get to number one uh first of which is kate sith this is a such a good little card for ice to be able to just turn one look at your opponent's hand and be like mm, no i don't like that someone which you're saving for late game or no i don't like that big forward it's really really good Fiona. Now, Fiona is a very powerful card, especially in tandem with things like Yasma. It's pay two wind and pay two colors and dull. But if at the beginning of your turn you've got Yasma and you're like, oh yeah, I'm just going to dull all my backups on Fiona to go grab any card I want and then reactivate again using Yasma, you've just effectively drawn three. But one of those cards is what you wanted to pick. Luca, I like this card because she can just grab any three or less backup from the break zone of any color and just play onto the field. So one earth dull, put Luca into the break zone, choose one backup of cost three or less in your break zone, play onto the field. Hurdy, I think is the first one that comes to mind. I again talked about Luca in one of my card combo shows, but the fact that you might be in Earth Lightning and you could say put Luca in the break zone, just get that off color Hurdy onto the field, reveal top card. Oh look, it's a a character i'll just put it to hand but then you can immediately well when he reactivates you can break him to then go get that iliwa back and i i just think to be able to bring any three cost off of the break zone onto the field like there's searchers there's just so many different cards that would be good uh there's chalinka chalinka could come in and then be like oh something can attack twice now realm I like trying to run monster decks. They aren't generally the most stable, but I think they're awesome. And Realm brings a lot to the table for monsters. Uh, the fact that she can bring in two monsters and one of one, one of two cost, but that, that works so well in tandem with the new monsters and the monster counters, because she will bring two things of the same color in, say Skeleton and Black Knight is the thing I talked about. Uh, that could bring in those two. Skeleton immediately gets one token and then also a token for itself. I think that's really cool. Alza. Yeah, just I've always loved stealing opponents forwards. So when Alza enters the field, choose one forward of cost two or less your opponent controls, you gain control of it. Doesn't end at the end of the turn, you just gain control of it. So if they've got a little porum over there sitting there that you really don't want there, just gain control of it. And all of a sudden, you've got their parm and it just stays there till it dies okay last but not least chalinka so i think this card is awesome mainly due to the fact that attacking in this game is one of the few things you can rely on that's going to happen but it's one of those things that has so many abilities tied like so many different things can happen with different cards when they attack like you've got for example uh, I think his name's Eduardo, the bard. When he attacks, 
Um, your opponent discards a card. If you can attack twice, your opponent discards two cards. If you've got BFA, Braska's Final Aeon, he attacks twice, he deals 10k twice to two different things. I mean, it's just nuts. But the fact that Chalinka can also return herself to your hand and then play it again, that's crazy. And I think that's awesome. Uh, uh, Archangel, for example. Uh, Archangel HM, I think it is. It deals two points to your opponent when it deals damage to them. With Chalinka, that can deal four points of damage. That's crazy. Alright guys, thank you ever so much. I do appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Let me know what some of your favourite cards in Opus 11 are. Uh, follow me on Twitter at ChocoBilly92. I will see you guys in the next video.